Here's the figure from our last class. He's been UV unwrapped. Let's just look at that by selecting him and going into edit mode and then looking in wireframe at the outlines here. You can see his head has been split up the nape of the neck to the to the crown, basically where the hair would be. And this leaves no seams in his face apart from around his mouth, separating the inside of his mouth from the outside. And the shirt has been split from front to back. Shirt is included with the pants. The shoes have been done the same way as the head. They have a single seam up the back and then they have a complete seam around the base separating the sole and the hands have been split horizontally. All right, so now we want to go back into look dev mode. I'll hit Z, look dev and click. Don't have to click on the look dev button. Object mode. And now with the figure still selected, let's go to texture paint, the texture paint tab at the top here. And here's our character. Here's his texture painting. And we can see here, if we go to view mode, we can see the UV unwraps. These are his eyes. This is his nose. That's his mouth. Very much distorted, as you can tell, but at least it's seamless across the face. Here is one hand. Here are probably the shoes, this U shape is probably the sole of the shoe. And here's either the front or the back of the t-shirt pants combination. We'll call them dungarees for want of a better word. Right, let's go back into paint mode. And now when we're in paint mode, we can see on the left hand side, there's a brush, there's various options, down here and we have the same controls except that we also have an annotate command in the 3d view here so we can paint either in the 3d view or we can paint in the 2d view and there's that red stroke so i'm going to undo those two and let's start to paint this guy with some reasonably realistic colors so here we are and something like that maybe and you can see as I'm painting there's a live update on the face of the figure so here we are that's just painting his face fairly simple straightforward and these islands are a little close to each other we may run into problems later on with that but we'll just deal with that when we come to it. Here's one hand, we don't know which it is. Well, now we do. And let's find another hand. There we go, there's another one. And we can see easily which one that is. And there's another one down here. So, a little more organization with your UV mapping never does any harm. And now I'm going to go on a hunt for the next one, and there it is. And we'll fill that in like that. Okay, so now the hands are done. The arms should probably be next. I'm going to identify them by just painting on them. I can see one just here. There we go, that's that. And you can see I have a double seam accidentally at the back, which means I need to paint that. Where is it? It's this long skinny guy here. Rather irritating, didn't want to have that, but it's not a big deal in the larger scheme of things. We just paint it like that, and now we're good. And now we need to find the second arm. I'm just going to paint a stroke across it in the 3D view and then I can identify it here and we'll paint that as well okay so now the arms and the hands 
are done. Check them in 3D just to make sure there aren't a few little bits left over. It doesn't look like there are. Okay. Now we want to paint the front. Ah, that's going to be this guy. Right, what colour are we going to give him for a t-shirt? Let's make it uh, blue. It's desaturated blue. Not quite as dark as that. There we go. So now I'm just going to paint over that t-shirt and the pants combination with the dungarees. And of course, this doesn't have to be done in texture paint. You can export this and save it out to something like Photoshop, any of your preferred editing programs, and that'll work just as well. Now here's where we need to be a little careful. We may find that Blender actually makes a few mistakes at this point regarding particular pixels so corrections can always be made of course in the 3d window on the actual model one of the things we have to remember when we're texture painting like this is that we're texture painting one of the inbuilt blender default uv textures and so when we look at the word image up here we see this little asterisk next to it indicating it hasn't been saved so we do need to save it or to pack it into the file after we've finished okay we can see here we've got an interesting little problem here this seam isn't quite right it should have been extended we're gonna have to do some extra work on that and ah this one here right so i think that's probably it yep there we go and there we go, we've got the insides of those t-shirts mapped. Not wholly successfully. You'll notice that as I zoom in, I'm getting clipping. This is a function of the camera view. Let's go in here to view. And we're looking at clip start. The default is 0.1 meter. I'm gonna take that down to 1,000th of a meter. And now I can zoom in a little more easily. So I'll need to choose the color picker again, click on the eyedropper, copy that color, and start to paint here. Okay, this is looking not particularly wonderful. Yeah, where are we here? Okay, yeah, so this is where the limit of our texture resolution is starting to be a problem. I'm going to reduce the size of the brush by holding down the F key and dragging the cursor and then just going in here. Yeah, I'm going to have to be a little careful but I think we can do this and just take it around here Again, a slightly more careful UV unwrapping would have solved this for us. You see, we're getting some problems here. And the next one we want to look at is this, which I'm going to hazard a guess is probably this part of the island here. Okay, let's concentrate now on the shoes. I'm going to put some squiggles on the shoes just to highlight them here you can see if we move in i can see a squiggle here so yeah these sideways u shapes were indeed the shoes let's click on this color and just take the value right down it's sometimes nice to use related values of colors in files f increase the size and carefully, particularly at this point, just paint over that particular island for the shoes. Looks good. And then here, squiggle that. We can see where it is pretty easily by the live update catching our eye. 
and we just go around this with the brush and that's good so now we have the shoes they look a little odd here again that's a function of the way that seams flow in a subdivision surface environment we'll just paint around them and now we want the soles and for the soles I'm actually going to use pure black it's just actually paint on the sole there we go that looks like it so paint here again carefully going around and here and you can see that sometimes you just get little elements which don't quite work even though we're actually going slightly over the edge this doesn't look like it's completely taken this one we'll find that that's going to be this guy here and we have a little bit more space around the island but again it's not entirely happy inside the heel here you can see there's a problem here what have i done select this color again do that and then on the the dungarees uh, yeah i'm going to once more just select this and then paint over it so we've got a reasonable reasonable selection never going to be perfect so again let's choose the shoe color it would be useful if blender had a kind of an instant color picker for this and we'll just paint here on the character itself to even up the profile slightly you can see it's not going to be perfect because of the limited geometry available for this operation what else do we need i think we're about there we could give him some hair we can paint hair on his head so after saving this file i'm going to can attempt at painting some hair on his head probably not going to be particularly successful given that we don't have a lot of geometry to work with here but it'll do for the purposes of this exercise remember there are three types of hair there is the hair that's painted on the head there is the hair that's modeled as a solid and is often given a soft body property so that it actually moves slightly with the motion of the body and then there is finally a full hair particle system which is much the best but does take more resources and more time okay that's not too bad i think we'll call that a go and he's got side bones on one side and not on the other so we'll fix that all right so now what do we need to do we need to save this image click on image pack all we need to do pack now it's inbuilt into the blender file and we can save it and close it